So it's not a big secret that I love fish. Obviously, I've got 35 or so tanks, 36 tanks. I've got uh, mostly freshwater tanks. I have cichlids and live bears. I've got fish from all different continents. I've got my new bracket system that I'm setting up. I've got my new nano reef tank upstairs. So I am totally engrossed in fish. I love them, I deal with them, I work with them. But there are a few things that I really dislike about the hobby and I'm gonna share those with you guys today. Hey fish friends, how's it going? I hope everyone's doing well. My name is Zenzo from TozawaTanks.com. So that's right, I do love fish, but there are things that I absolutely dislike, almost hate about this hobby. The first one's pretty self-explanatory. I don't like it when fish die. As someone who loves fish so much, anytime one of my fish passes away, it really does bother me. Whether it uh, is a fish that I kind of consider to be a pet, or if it's one of my fish that I'm breeding to sell to a store, Regardless of, you know, how I feel about that fish as far as my attachment to that fish, it's still a living thing that was under my care, and it really does bother me when that fish dies under my care. Now, what doesn't happen very often, in fact, it's very infrequent that I do find any dead fish, but every once in a while, there will be a fish that passes away. Sometimes it might be due to old age. Sometimes it might be due to something that I did or neglected. Sometimes it might be due to another fish, you know, aggression, things like that. Regardless of all of that, it still bothers me and it's something that I don't think I'll ever get over. The second thing that I dislike about this hobby is having to buy food. Now for most of you guys watching this channel, it's probably not that big of a deal. You might have one or two or three aquariums. Maybe if you're a little bit nutty, you might have five or 10 or so. With 35 plus tanks going on, I am using a lot of food. A lot of my tanks are heavily stocked because I'm growing fish and selling fish. So I am going through food all of the time. Now every once in a while I do get food for free if a manufacturer sends me food that they want me to test or sometimes I will get some uh, really inexpensive foods at auction and sometimes uh, when I do buy my food at the store I get a discount so it does help a little bit. However, I am buying food all the time and I have to buy various different types of food. So I've got to buy different types of food for my Oscar, I have to buy different types of food for my Mbuna, I've got to buy different types of food for my you know, African cichlids and my guppies and my um, tetras and my epistos and all types of things, right? So I am having to get different types of food for different fish all the time and it gets expensive. The next thing that I really dislike about the hobby is when there are equipment failures. So because these ecosystems can be kind of fragile at times, they are reliant upon us to make sure that the water quality remains good, that there's you know movement of water, that the uh, water is oxygenated via either an air stone or a sponge filter or a power head or you know, a filter um, output or something like that. We are very responsible in ensuring that these ecosystems you know, run continuously and that the fish remain healthy and all the inhabitants, you know, remain healthy. When you have an equipment failure, if you have a heater that goes bad, if you have a pump that goes down, if there's a power outage, there's a lot of different things that can happen to the equipment that we have. And when something breaks, it could be catastrophic. Now there are things that you can do obviously to minimize that and to you know mitigate uh, losses you know whether it be having a backup generator or having you know systems that are very simple so for example in here most of these tanks are filtered just by air so they're on a central air pump and I just use sponge filters so if something happens I do have you know some spare air pumps where I can plug them in and uh, use like a gang valve and drop you know um, air into various tanks that is an option I also have a rebuild kit for my central air pump so if something happens and it starts to go bad or go you know go down I can repair it but still I am reliant on you know mechanical equipment to make sure that my fish stay alive and if something goes bad and it has happened before again it can be catastrophic and I really don't like that the next thing that I don't like and this is really kind of my fault and you know not really anything about the hobby and that's water changes so I do a lot of water changes and um, I gotta be honest with you, I don't love it. It's a lot of work. So just as an example, down here in this room, I have 30, I think I have 30 tanks, 30, yeah, it is 30. So I've got 30 tanks down here and um, everything from 75 and 90 gallon tanks, 55s, 40s, 20s, 29s, 10s, you name it. They're all down here and they all need water changes. Now I'm lucky that a few of them, like my planted one, my planted tank over there, my tank and econ tank behind me, 
um, the little shell dweller tank that I've got over there. Some of them don't need as frequent of water changes, but some of them need a lot of water changes. So all my cichlid tanks with my peacocks growing out, my female peacocks and everything in here, they need a lot of water changes. So that means I'm doing water changes twice a week or every four days or so. Um, a lot of volume of water changes, so it can be a lot of work. Now, you could say, yeah, Zenzo, why don't you set up an auto water change system? Don't think I haven't thought about that. I definitely have thought about that, but that would require me to drill all of my tanks to find some way to plumb all those tanks to some type of drain. I don't really have that system. The drain that I have is too high, so I would have to like, you know, go into the ground or hire a plumber and cut a hole in the ground. None of that's gonna work for me. Um, the other issue that I have is here in San Francisco, California, we have chloramine. We don't have chlorine. Our water is treated with chloramine. So that means that the water that I would uh, be filling um, the tanks back up with would have to be pre-treated and go through a sophisticated system before it gets uh, automatically put back into the tank. You know, I could do like an RO system. But anyway, so it's more complicated than it's worth. So I just manually do water changes. Now I have perfected it to some level by using multiple pumps and um, hoses to where I'm not carrying buckets. And you know, I can do all these tanks in this room in less than two hours very easily. So it's not a lot of work as far as time, but if you do two hours or even 90 minutes, if I'm really quick, you know, times two, that's four hours, you know, anywhere from three to four hours a week just in this room doing water changes. That's not talking about the tanks upstairs and all the other stuff going on. So water changes can be a real drag. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about today, and this is something that I really do hate, and that is energy costs. So with an aquarium, there are things that have to be plugged into the wall, and I've talked about this before already as far as equipment failures. So in some cases, it might be heaters, it might be lights, it might be you know return pumps or power heads or air, air, um, air pumps, etc. Whatever it is that you have plugged into you know, the, the light socket or the wall socket to provide some type of service to your tank is pulling energy off the grid, right? And so depending on how many tanks you have and what they're using, your energy bill can rise significantly. Again, down here in the fish room with 30 tanks, I have most of them running on central air, so it's just one air pump plugging them in or plugging plugged in to uh, provide the filtration. Um, I do have a dehumidifier. The dehumidifier is running all the time. So because there's so much water in this enclosed space, I've got to make sure that I draw that out and I've got that plumb to where it automatically drains outside. But um, that pulls a lot of energy. Um, a few of my tanks in here, I keep the lights on. Most of the time the lights are off for most of the tanks. Um, the only ones that I keep the lights on are the ones that have plants in them, just to make sure that the plants have lights, obviously. But uh, between these tanks down here and the tanks upstairs, my energy bill is very high. Now, it used to be in the $600 range, six, $650 per month that US, so that is a very high energy bill for, you know, just a family of four with, you know, just a moderately, you know, um, sized home. I have been able to drop that significantly. I've got it down into the mid 300s, although um, in the colder months when it's like in the 50s here, um, it might spike up to like 400 degree, $400 per month or something like that. So that's a lot of money for, you know, just a hobby, which is why I have to do other things to supplement my hobby to, you know, ensure that I'm able to pay for everything. So that's my list of things that I don't like about the hobby, just those five. Um, you know, there are other things that I find to be kind of inconvenient and, you know, it's not re really that big of a deal, but those are five things that uh, really came to mind as far as, uh, you know, things that could be really altering as far as, you know, disrupting, you know, my hobby. If like there's equipment failures, like if something happens and, you know, shuts this room down, you know, that would be a big problem. Um, obviously the energy bill is a problem every month. Um, water changes, something that's never going to go away. Fish dying, it doesn't happen that often, but it does, you know, pull on the heartstrings. So I don't like when that happens. And uh, what was the last thing that I don't like? Oh yeah, and buying food. And that's never going to go away either as long as I'm keeping fish and as long as I have this many fish tanks running and I probably have six or 700 fish. So six or 700 mouths to feed is a lot of mouths to feed and I'm having to do it 
every day, sometimes two or three times a day for some of the fry. So again, that's a lot of food to buy, so that's never gonna change. But um, again, there's some other little things that are you know, minor issues, but you know they're just kind of small and infrequent. But uh, these are some of the bigger things I wanna talk about. So that's my list. I would love to hear what your biggest issues are with the hobby. You know, What do you dislike the most? What drives you nuts? Put your uh, thoughts down below in the comments. I would love to read them and uh, check out what you have to say. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.